Hello everyone and welcome to Path of Exile. So this is basically start of day two. As you can see I reached level 68. It took me like nine to ten hours to reach maps. Uh, I spent some time doing the league mechanic and I gotta say it's one of those times where you really want to do the league mechanic early. Let me tell you why. So uh, this is like one of those games where you like Clash of Clans where you have to put stuff to build and then wait for it to actually build. So all of that takes time. They, they have to gather materials and the materials you find in the maps for them to gather. But the other things like the smelting happens uh, over time. Same thing about the, the, the crop farming. So here you have like your farm and here you can get wheat. Pumpkins, uh, corn, all of that stuff. And here is the mine, or where they bring the ores back from, uh, because the mines are actually in the maps. And the most important part is probably here, the shipping. So the shipping, you will have these different options with uh, specific resources that they favor, for which they will reward you uh, bonus. They give you bonus rewards for, for them. And uh, an example of the stuff I've gotten, I think today I've got like five chaos after a like two hour expedition. But yeah, remember, this is just very early. I got a couple of uniques out of that as well, such as uh, I think I got like a Sadima starch, uh, you know, trash uniques, but uniques nonetheless. Uh, Loctonials, uh, this thing I got from the from the expeditions. And uh, here's the crafting table. You, you could actually do that. Um, sadly, there is nothing here for the build I'm playing, which is a uh, physical bleed. Uh, but if there was like a melee damage or if you're playing like a uh, like a, a fire build, you could get fire explode here for if you manage to get 18 runes somehow. And this can be upgraded further later. But for now, I gotta go gather more gold because it consume gold per hour. So 600 gold per hour. <clears throat> In maps, I don't think it's very difficult to come by more than 600 gold per hour. Now, I'm going to do a map and then talk about the build a little bit. Of course, to do this blue. Before that, before that, I need to... Change the gear because I bought these two cap resistances. See, we're almost there, and with the gloves, I'll be capped. I spent like five chaos on this item and like three chaos on this other one. Normally, you wouldn't pay anything for those, but it's early in the league, so you really want to get your reses capped. And yeah, I'm actually gonna. Craft more life here. Then pink it. I don't really need another green one. Yeah, like that. I need to start getting some chaos rest. Don't mind my stash, it's always a mess. There you go. Fully capped, let's go. This is a retaliation gladiator. Actually, let me lower the volume of this a little bit. It might be too loud. And what we're doing is uh, we're counterattacking, missing the crushing feast. And the the other one, Eviscerate. Rushing Fist is very satisfying with Fist of War. Very large AoE. And for more active damage, I have Blade Storm. And of course the the bleedings themselves that you can apply with Leaf Slam. Mm. 
you know, in these maps, killing a bunch of stuff is not really that much worth it. Just trying to get the Atlas completion ASAP. You can see the frequency of usage of the of the skills is not that bad. <clears throat> Bossing is <clears throat> obviously light issue. Because sometimes bosses don't want to attack you outright. They want to do their shenanigans or throw spells at you. But I'm also a spell block cap with versatile combatants. And I should actually equip an Amethyst Flask now that I think of it. Okay. I don't know why they chose these maps for Tier 1. They're like the worst layouts there are. Really awful. I, I actually forgot where the boss is at in this one. It's in the middle, right? Might be. It might be here. After you block, you have like maybe 2.5 seconds to use the skill and then it then you have to block again. Yeah, it's this guy. And there's the boss. There you go. And damage over time is an issue. Okay. So, the build is uh, retaliation. So I, <clears throat> I decided to go this way because I figured mana would be an issue and I was right. But after coming this way and getting these points here, I only got the uh, reservation efficiency much later. So getting these points here, uh, pretty much made it so I stopped using a mana flask in the campaign. Later on, I also grabbed this that makes attacks cost 20% of life instead of mana. I respect that because that was 4 points. I grabbed the uh, skill AoE here and then these 2 points gave me almost the same effect but also with reduced cost. So now I'm spending uh, 13 mana and 3 life and I have 72 mana on reserved. And uh, this is giving me mana leech. So that's how I solved the issue. I didn't want to go blood magic because uh, blood and sand. Uh, blood and sand is just AOE. And since we're doing bleeding, it's not really giving any damage at all. But flesh and stone has both uh, effects. Has a 17% less damage taken or 18% more melee physical when we switch to blood stands. But and and during mapping, I will always keep it in 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 sand stands. Then I'm also using an auto exertion battle mage's cry to automate vulnerability. And actually, I need a blue socket here to add hexbloom. Hexbloom will make it so the curse will just spread around all the monsters that are nearby, and will make it much easier to keep the curse around. I think this is a good solution before you actually get like uh, curse on hits somewhere and it's like a 15 mana reservation I'm also reserving pride and uh, and blood and sand of course I'm using the banner occasionally I don't I don't really like the uh, the stacking mechanic of the banner it might be the case that you need to invest into getting more of them uh, probably Probably here, Valor Gained. There is another one here. This one here. Valor Gained and Banner Duration. And this one is pretty good. Gives you Endurance and Frenzy Charges when you... When you when you place a Banner and Maximum Valor. And since we're War Crying, I can use the Valor Generation here. It's a good bit of damage, though. It's uh, 8%. No, it's 4% more physical damage base. And say, for instance, 
you have like uh, the maximum stack is 50, so that's 50% increase aura effect that you get. So it's it's very good. Other than that, so in order, I, I've been playing Retaliation since like level 10 or something. The first thing I did was to come down here. I, I grabbed this. Then I skipped all the way down here, grabbed Versatile Combatant. Then went and went in and grabbed this point. And then later on this. And with that, you're, you have Block Cap. Well, alongside with the Determined Survivor Gladiator node, which in hindsight, you, it, there is a possibility for you to not have that early and instead go straight for Measure Retaliation. Because you can get uh, 30, 30 block on shields, up to 40 block on shields during the campaign, if you're lucky enough. So that's almost, almost what is being given by this uh, node. So maybe you don't, you don't have to grab that. And after that, you know, iron reflexes, some life, these four resistances, which I think I can remove now and just grab, uh, grab more armor elsewhere in a better node. Then uh, later on, I remove these points and I respect into this because this gives uh, three maximum attack block. Since we're reducing with measure retali with uh, versatile combatant, that is taking me uh, closer to the 75. And you can also get more. You can get like 2% max attack and spell block in these nodes. And if you want to, you can spec these back and, and get some more here and remove Testudo. But right now, the life on block here and this life on block, it's it's a nice recovery layer. And uh, and then when here and RT for the... for the... Uh, do not miss my attacks. And physical damage with skills that cost life. Both uh, eviscerate. I mean, everything is costing life. So uh, it's 40% increased physical damage. And then here for the chance to aggravate. So the aggravate is being dealt by Bladestorm. Since when you attack with Bladestorm, you leave this one. Every, every single hit of, the, of those is a melee hit. It has a chance to aggravate. And do I want to sell that? Well, yeah, why not? Probably worth more than one chaos, but anyway, there's a bunch of added lining. So you use blade storm, blade storm aggravates, but the main damage is coming from using eviscerate and using uh, crushing fist. So when you use either of those, there is a chance for you to enable the other one. So uh, you may have seen that in the in the map showcase, but let's go quickly to the Blood Aqueduct. So you block, and then you see these two symbols. The, the shield one is Eviscerate, and the other one is Crushing Fist. As you can see Crushing Fist, I can still use it. I'll use it again, and then I, it enables the other one. And this is like the chains you can get. As you can see, I don't really have to use Blade Storm. I just use it in a single target to make the bleed from, from Eviscerate much faster. So here, here are the links. Eviscerate is my four link with uh, Brutality, Chance to Bleed, and Melee Physical Damage. Then Blade Storm is, is giving me Fortify. It's maiming to make the enemy take increased physical damage and momentum for some movement speed and attack speed. Crushing Fist just uh, Fist of War for the good feeling of it and faster attacks. Flesh and Stone, Blood and Sand, then uh, Lip Slam with faster attacks and the Auto Exertion setup. And you know the gear is just, you know, pick, picked up gear from the ground. Tincture I have equipped here. That's something else that I wanted to talk about, but I can't really use it. Because when you enable this, it drains 1% of your mana per second. So let me show you how fast that actually happens. I'll use that. Then the mana burn starts. And it's gone. No more tincture effect. But if you see the mods on the tincture, 
It's 82% increased bleeding damage and 18% damage over time multiplier. So what I want to get here is instead of cooldown recovery, uh, I want reduce mana burn rate. And then I'll somehow path towards these points to make it drain life instead. So that I can keep it for as long as I want, as long as I have good region for it. And maybe uh, grab this. And, and grab the reduce burn rate to, in, to, to keep it even longer, you know. So uh, that's it. I'm going to be doing a lot of mapping today, hopefully, and maybe uh, see if I can get to, to red maps. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, leave a like, and uh, I'll see you in the next update for Path of Exile.